Specialty coffee can be a pretty tricky subject to tackle, so I'm gonna break it down for you in a couple minutes. Let's start at the beginning. There are three generations or waves in the coffee industry. The first wave are things like Maxwell House and Folgers. You know, the stuff your dad put in the coffee pot in the morning before work. The second wave is what a lot of us are already familiar with. Pete's, Starbucks, and Dunkin' Donuts are all great examples of the second wave. They provide their customers with batch brewed coffee and espresso paired with milk drinks that have flavorings such as vanilla, caramel, and hazelnut. The third wave is the most recent development in the coffee industry. This is specialty coffee. Specialty coffee emphasizes the coffee itself and tends to stay away from any flavorings and sometimes even milk depending on where you're grabbing a cup from. Most specialty coffee shops will highlight the natural flavor of the coffee by brewing it in a pour over method or a high end espresso. So what is specialty coffee? Is it some arbitrary phrase someone came up with to look good on a marketing campaign? Or is there a more concrete definition? Well, according to the Specialty Coffee Association, the coffee needs to meet a set of standards throughout its growing, roasting, and brewing process to be considered as specialty coffee. One of these standards is the 100 point coffee review scale, which much like the scale set in place for beers and wines, puts a numeric value on the quality of the coffee. Coffee scoring 80 points or above on this scale is to be considered as specialty coffee. So what does this all mean for you? Why should you care about specialty coffee? Well, I'm here to tell you. Let's start with taste. Many of us think of a dark, acidic, and even bitter taste when it comes to coffee. And this has become almost universally known as the coffee taste. There is, however, something inherently wrong with that identity that we've given coffee. Coffee at its purest is a plant the pit of a cherry more specifically, and that dark and bitter taste is not its natural flavor. When coffee beans are roasted with care, you'll be able to taste the true flavor of that bean, and even the region of origin. Roasters that sell specialty coffee prefer to roast their beans lighter to start revealing and highlighting the natural flavors of the coffee. Flavors such as blueberry, grapefruit, strawberry, and many more can be present in a black cup of coffee without any added flavoring. This keeps roasters honest about the freshness and overall quality of their coffee. The darker that you roast a bean, the more defects you can hide. Now that doesn't mean that all dark roasts are bad, but if you start to taste any smoky, ashy, or acrid flavor in your cup, the Specialty Coffee Association does categorize those notes as burnt on the coffee taster's flavor wheel. Specialty coffee encourages a healthier relationship between the consumer and the farmer. With higher expectations on sourcing and taste, the consumer becomes well informed on where their coffee is coming from and how it gets to their cup. On the other side of the bean, with the help of direct trade importers, farmers can earn a more than fair wage for their product, increasing the overall quality of life for them and their families. Coffee is the second most traded commodity in the world, only next to crude oil, and the number one when it comes to consumable products. What that means is that there are a lot of different varieties of your favorite drink out there, and many more to be discovered. The world of specialty coffee is a blossoming one that wants to find the very best coffees in the world and to highlight them and also to bring on a new standard of taste, trade, and community. I encourage you to start exploring coffee in a brand new way, to think about all the hard work and dedication that comes before that first sip of your favorite drink in the morning, and to seek out coffee that honors honesty and transparency in everything.